It was engineered for the track, but they unleashed it on the street. The 1975 Porsche 930 Turbo, with its flat-six turbocharged H6 engine, was a car so powerful and unpredictable, it didn't just outperform others, it scared its drivers when its power was unleashed. With a turbocharged punch at 4,000 RPM, one mistake could cost you everything. So why did Porsche create such a dangerous beast, and what did it mean for the future of sports cars? What happens when you take raw racing technology and put it into a streetcar? For Porsche, the answer came in the form of the 930 Turbo, a car that didn't just bend the rules of road performance, but nearly obliterated them. To understand its origins, we have to rewind to the early 1970s, where Porsche's domination on the track became the catalyst for one of the most electrifying and notorious sports cars of its time. Porsche's foray into turbocharging began in the Can-Am Racing Series with the monstrous 917, nicknamed the Turbo Panzer. This car was a revelation. Producing up to 1,100 horsepower, it destroyed competitors, leaving a trail of dominance so absolute that the series eventually folded under the weight of its success. But the technology behind the 917's engine offered something extraordinary, power like the world had never seen before. Porsche, fresh off its racing triumphs, decided to transfer this turbocharged prowess to where it had never been used before, a road car. By the early 1970s, Porsche was feeling the pressure of homologation regulations. These rules required manufacturers to build a minimum number of street legal cars for participation in certain racing classes. To meet these requirements, Porsche needed to develop a production car that embodied the raw potential of its race cars. That car would be the 930 Turbo, a direct result of their success and ambition. Of course, adapting cutting-edge race technology for the road was easier said than done. Turbocharging, still in its infancy for commercial cars, posed significant obstacles. The same KKK turbocharger that propelled the 917 to victory introduced a phenomenon known as turbo lag. On the track, where speed was the only priority, the delay between acceleration and full power was manageable. However so, for everyday drivers, this unpredictability would soon become a defining and hazardous trait of the 930 Turbo. The heart of this machine was the three-liter flat-six engine borrowed from the renowned Carrera RS and turbocharged to push out 256 horsepower in Europe or 234 in the United States. At a time when most cars struggled to crack the 200 horsepower mark, this was a revelation. German highways became the playground for what was then the fastest production car in the country, capable of hitting 155 miles per hour. In a world of mundane sedans and hatchbacks, the 930 Turbo was essentially a race car wearing license plates. But while its power dazzled the automotive world, the challenges of taming it foreshadowed trouble. This engine, however temperamental, was truly groundbreaking. It used a single turbocharger to compress air into the engine, significantly increasing the amount of oxygen available for combustion. Combined with an air-cooled design, unique compared to newer water-cooled competitors, the engine had a distinctive tone and character. Even the whale tail rear spoiler wasn't just a flashy addition. It directed airflow into the engine while adding downforce to keep the car grounded, a necessity if you wanted to keep all that power pointed in the right direction. Yet as impressive as it was, there was an underlying truth. The 930 Turbo wasn't built with the casual driver in mind. Its engineering brilliance masked a lack of accessibility and its reliance on borrowed racing tech gave it a personality that was as unforgiving as it was exciting. By relying on racing DNA, Porsche had created a unique combination of risk and reward, one that would define the car's legacy. And that legacy promised both thrills and danger. The turbo lag and rear engine layout hinted at a darker side to this marvel of performance, a side that would become infamous among its growing roster of brave and sometimes unlucky drivers. That story is only beginning. Imagine this, you're pressing the throttle of the 1975 Porsche 930 Zero Turbo, cruising comfortably through the RPM range, when suddenly, around 4,000 RPM, an invisible wall of power smashes into you. The tires grip for dear life, the rear end squirms under the force and your heart leaps into your throat. It's breathtaking and terrifying all at once. That in its simplest and rawest form is turbo lag, defining trait of the 930 turbo and the characteristic that would cement its reputation as a beast to be tamed. Turbo lag occurs because of the way turbochargers work. 
to generate the immense power that put this car ahead of its time, the single KKK turbocharger relied on exhaust gases to spin up its turbine. But at low engine revs, there wasn't enough energy from the exhaust to make that happen quickly. The result was a delay, almost like a calm before the storm, followed by an explosive surge of power once the turbo built pressure. In the case of the 930 Turbo, that surge wasn't gradual or polite. It was wild, almost violent. The car felt one way for most of the drive and then, at high revs, transformed into something almost unrecognizable. Surging forward like a slingshot released at full stretch. This wasn't just thrilling, it was also deeply unpredictable. The way the power arrived all at once caught even experienced drivers off guard. The rear engine layout of the 930 Turbo, while great for traction under acceleration, only amplified the issue when the car entered a corner. Too much throttle mid-turn, and suddenly the rear wheels could overwhelm the limits of grip with the car pivoting into uncontrollable oversteer. Even with its wider rear tires, a deliberate design choice to mitigate instability, the ferocity of the power made it nearly impossible for the car to maintain composure in untrained hands. So why did it feel so dramatic? To answer that, let's dive into the technical soul of the powertrain. At its heart was the 3-liter flat-six engine with a bore of 95 millimeters and a stroke of 70 millimeters, yielding a slightly oversquared design that leaned toward high revving performance. Its compression ratio remained relatively low at 6.5 to 1, deliberately so to prevent detonation under boost, especially on the lower octane fuels available in the mid-1970s. Around this flat six was a sophisticated, if not quirky, arrangement of components, from its forged pistons and crankshaft to the single turbocharger mounted low on the engine's exhaust side. This turbo fed into an intake system routed through a central manifold and down to individual intake runners servicing each of the six cylinders. Porsche's engineers designed the cylinder heads and intake valves to handle immense airflow, but these systems were optimized only for when the turbo was fully spooled. Until that moment, the engine operated under pre-boost conditions, feeling sluggish and unresponsive. But once the turbo hit its stride, the combination of compressed intake air and carefully engineered fuel delivery handled by Bosch's Cagetronic mechanical injection system transformed the flat six into a fire-breathing monster capable of putting out 256 horsepower in its European spec. This may not sound like much by today's standards, but in 1975, it was borderline outrageous. Most sports cars of the era hovered closer to the 150 to 200 horsepower range and the way the 930 Turbo delivered its power made it all the more shocking. Adding to the drama was the four-speed manual transmission. While most cars of the mid-70s offered five-speed gearboxes, Porsche chose to limit the gears to four. Their reasoning? Fewer shifts meant fewer interruptions to the turbocharger's already finicky power delivery. However, the compromise was long, tall gearing. In first gear, you could fly past 40 miles per hour before even considering a change. This stretched gearing exacerbated the turbo lag with each shift, forcing the engine down to lower RPMs where the turbo would have to spool back up before delivering power again. The marriage of these technical features created a driving experience like no other, and for some, not in a good way. Drivers unaccustomed to the turbo lag would often misjudge their inputs especially on corner exits, as the sudden burst of power made the car feel impossible to control. Stories of spun-out 930s were common, and many owners quickly realized that this car ruled with an iron fist. If you didn't approach it with respect, it wouldn't hesitate to punish you. One of the most gripping examples of this was the car's behavior in real-world conditions. Low-speed corners posed a unique challenge. Picture this. You're exiting a roundabout in second gear. You steady the throttle and, right as the steering straightens, the turbo spools launching the car into an oversteered frenzy. There was a sharp learning curve here for anyone who didn't treat the throttle pedal like it was made of glass. Even professional drivers described it as something that required intense focus and constant adaptation. The consequences of this demanding nature were real. Accidents piled up as the car fell into inexperienced hands, solidifying its reputation among enthusiasts and critics alike. Terrifying wasn't uncommon as a descriptor. Still, for those who mastered the 930 Turbo, it became a badge of honor, a proof of skill and bravery in taming the machine. But this reputation wasn't going unnoticed. While some dubbed it exhilarating, others began whispering a name that would forever define the car's legacy, the Widowmaker. And for Porsche, it was only the beginning of a saga that would paint both triumph and tragedy into the car's storied history.
Why did they call it the Widowmaker? For the Porsche 930 Turbo? The nickname wasn't a clever marketing term or a fanciful exaggeration. It was a grim reflection of reality. The car earned its reputation not from journals or ads, but from the roads themselves, where its challenging handling dynamics left countless drivers overmatched. What looked like a masterpiece on paper became undeniably treacherous in the real world. At the center of the controversy was its rear engine layout. With most of the car's weight over the back wheels, it provided excellent traction during acceleration, but this setup created a delicate balance. If the rear tires lost grip, especially in sharp corners or under sudden throttle inputs, the back of the car would snap around like a pendulum. The unprepared found themselves in high velocity spins or worse. Turbo lag only made it more risky as the sudden power surge often arrived at the least opportune moments, amplifying oversteer into something almost impossible to recover from. These traits had consequences. In one particularly high-profile case, Porsche faced a $2.5 million lawsuit after the family of a victim alleged the car's unpredictability made it inherently unsafe. Stories of fatal accidents circulated alongside photos of shredded 930s, reinforcing the idea that this car was not just for any driver, it required precision, experience, and respect. The Widowmaker title wasn't some badge of honor, it was a warning. But instead of backing away from these challenges, Porsche leaned in and began creating answers that would transform the future of sports cars. How do you take a car like the 930 Turbo, build on the edge of performance and peril, and turn it into the foundation of one of the greatest legacies in automotive history? For Porsche, the answer wasn't to abandon what made the car so unique, but to refine it. The 930's ability to thrill and terrify in equal measure highlighted flaws that Porsche couldn't ignore. Instead of shying away from these challenges, they faced them head on, transforming their approach to engineering high performance cars. First came the task of helping drivers tame the beast. Porsche quickly realized that their customers didn't just need a car, they needed to understand it. The company began offering special driver education programs tailored for the 930 Turbo, teaching owners how to anticipate turbo lag, manage the car's aggressive power delivery, and control the tricky oversteer. These classes weren't just a marketing gimmick, they were a necessity. Porsche understood that the 930 Turbo wasn't for everyone and education was the first step toward keeping drivers alive behind the wheel. At the same time, Porsche engineers were looking beyond the 930, toward a future where raw performance could coexist with control. Lessons learned from their customers' experiences and the knowledge gained from racing began to drive innovation. The first major breakthrough came not with the 930 itself, but with its spiritual successor, the Porsche 959, a car many consider the beginning of modern supercars. The 959 addressed one of the core issues of the 930 Turbo, its rear engine layout amplifying the effects of turbo lag. By introducing all-wheel drive, the 959 ensured that the enormous power produced by its twin turbocharged flat six was distributed to all four wheels, giving drivers far greater control, even at the limit. This technology, born in part from the flaws of the 930, marked a turning point that would eventually trickle down into future generations of the 911 Turbo. But Porsche wasn't done refining the 930 itself. In 1978, just three years after its debut, the model received one of its biggest updates, the introduction of a 3.3-liter engine. By increasing the engine's displacement, along with adding an air-to-air -air intercooler to cool the compressed air from the turbocharger, Porsche pushed the power up to 300 horsepower in European specs. While this gave the car an even more commanding presence on the road, it also exacerbated its core handling issues. The extra power widened the car's capabilities, but left drivers facing an even steeper learning curve. The turbo lag also remained largely unchanged, ensuring the same sudden explosion of power just waiting to throw drivers off balance. In less skilled hands, this updated version was just as unforgiving as the original. However, Porsche wasn't purely adding more power without refining the rest of the car. Over the years, suspension tuning, revised aerodynamics, and wider tires were all implemented to help bring greater stability to the platform. The iconic whale tail wing, aside from being a visual hallmark of the 930 Turbo, was tweaked to generate more downforce, keeping the car firmly planted at high speed. Still, the car's reputation as a high-risk, high-reward machine persisted, and owners needed exceptional skill, or some would say sheer luck, to truly master it. By 1989, the final iteration of the 930 Turbo hit the streets. 
offering one more major improvement, a five-speed gearbox. The addition of an extra gear allowed for shorter ratios, keeping the engine in its power band more consistently and helping reduce the disorienting drop in turbo pressure during shifts. Combined with the years of steady refinements, the five-speed 930 Turbo was seen as the ultimate evolution of a car that had taught Porsche some of its hardest lessons. It balanced the raw character of its earliest forms with just enough polish to hint at the sophistication that would define future 911 Turbos. The 930 Turbo may have started as an experiment in adapting race tech to the road, but its weaknesses pushed Porsche to develop revolutionary solutions the kind of solutions that ultimately shape their identity as a brand. The Widowmaker forced Porsche to rethink everything about performance, from the limits of power to how drivers connected to their machines. Without the challenges posed by the 930 Turbo, it's hard to imagine what Porsche's modern sports cars would look like today. As its production run ended, the 930 left behind more than just an infamous nickname. It became a symbol of Porsche's ability to learn, evolve, and create something extraordinary out of something flawed. And while its performance paved the way for safer, more controllable sports cars, the story of the 930 doesn't end with engineering. It extends into the garages of collectors who keep its legacy alive. But there's a reason its impact still looms large decades later. Why is a car that once struck fear into those who drove it now one of the most desirable collectibles in the automotive world? The Porsche 930 Turbo has gone from being a perilous performer to a coveted icon. And it's not just about nostalgia. This car represents a perfect storm of engineering, racing heritage, and raw excitement all wrapped into one machine. For enthusiasts, the appeal starts with its reputation. The Widowmaker nickname, while ominous in the 70s and 80s, has transformed into a badge of respect. Owning a 930 Turbo isn't just about having a classic Porsche, it's about taming a legend. It's sitting in the same driver's seat that countless brave or overconfident souls once did and experiencing firsthand what drew people to its intoxicating mix of danger and dominance. For collectors, this allure only deepens thanks to its roots in Porsche's racing success, a direct link to the glory days of Can-Am and the 917. Of course, it's not just the lore that makes it collectible. The 930's mechanical heart is what truly sets it apart. That air-cooled, single-turbo, 3.0-liter flat six, later expanded to 3.3 liters, still stands as a marvel of engineering. Its intricate design, from the forged pistons to the massive turbocharger to the distinctive sound of its whirring fan, is as much a part of its character as its performance. It feels unapologetically raw, especially when compared to modern sports cars with their refined, often muted, power plants. This was a car that roared with purpose, its engine a physical manifestation of Porsche's obsession with pushing boundaries, even at the risk of crossing them. Adding to its mystique is rarity. Porsche produced just 18,770 units of the 930 Turbo during its run. Finding one in mint condition today can set you back as much as $300,000, well above its original price, but a reflection of what it's come to symbolize. Over the decades, the Widowmaker has not only survived its infamous reputation, it's thrived on it, evolving from a cautionary tale to a collector's crown jewel. It's a car that doesn't just sit in garages, it lives in automotive history, proof that the balance between fear and admiration often leaves the most lasting legacy. The 930 Turbo was more than just a car, it marked a pivotal moment for Porsche in the sports car world. By building something so raw and challenging, Porsche forced itself to innovate, creating not only a wild machine, but also the solutions to tame it. Its flaws, infamous as they were, became the foundation for progress, shaping technologies and philosophies that define modern performance vehicles. So what do you think? What other cars have walked the fine line between power and control, changing automotive history in the process? Drop a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Sometimes greatness is born from imperfection, a truth the Widowmaker proves perfectly.